The all American half pound of sweet pure beef patty, lettuce, tomato, singles. This is Singles Going Steady, the podcast dedicated to exploring great singles with a particular eye to the punk, new wave, and DIY eras of the last century. I'm Adrian Madoc. <laughs> and I'm Steve McGowan. We are in a band, the Beef People, who recorded, who released a single in 1986 on our own label, Zub Records, and we are record collectors and passionate especially about the expression of pop music perfection that is the single recording. Exploring the mystery of what makes for a great single is what propelled us to begin this podcast. You know, my voice is extra low today, so it's good that we're switching names. Good, good. Uh, We're excited about our uh, single today. It is um, Eight Miles High, The Bird's Cover by Minneapolis's Husker Du, one of our favorite bands and one of our favorite singles. Uh, This single was released on SST Records in 1984, just prior to their um, amazing double record, Zen Arcade. It's not on Zen Arcade. It's a a standalone single, and it's just an astounding cover. Yeah, and it was rather gutsy, I think, to take a sort of um, hippie-era... Um, classic, oh, uh, you know, at, at the height of um, you know, that birds recording at the height of, of sort of the psychedelic movement, mm-hmm. and, especially when a lot of bands, you know, were were kind of doing that birdsy thing at the time. Right, right. So, um, like a, a reappropriation, mm-hmm. and and uh, you know, putting it into the aesthetic that that Husker Du was. Yeah, completely making for. it their own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this band is uh, super influential on uh, Adrian and I and the Beef People. Um, learning uh, Husker Du songs was just uh, really, a, a, you know, it was an education since the, the, the two separate songwriters, Bob Mould and Grant Hart, and learning their songs um, really helped us kind of put together our own things. And, and certainly this was an early adopter of the notion of of covering in a way that you're taking a song that has a great structure and um, reinterpreting it for your own aesthetic, which, you know, is is rather pedestrian now. I mean, that's what YouTube is filled with, people doing sort of, you know, their, here's my slowed down, soulful version of a pop song. (laughs) But... The, you know, this was not hackneyed at the time. No. This was revolutionary. All right. Before we uh, get started uh, on the Who's Du song, we're going to listen to a little bit of The Birds. Uh, the song Eight Miles High it was released in 1966 on uh, the uh, Fifth Dimension album. It's quite a uh, a song of its time. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to play a little bit of it now for you. The birds doing the original version of Eight Miles High. Yeah. 
That was the birds and their iconic version of Eight Miles High. Uh, now we are going to listen to the Who's Could Do version. Uh, I think we're going to get right into it now. Here they are, Who's Could Do, doing their version of Eight Miles High. <laughs> Okay, who's could do? Um, kind of showing off um, a really powerful sound, especially for a trio. And, and Bob Mould's guitar playing is uh, a little bit more, um, uh, a little fancier than your average hardcore type band. The, the, the band was definitely growing and uh, and getting more melodic, working into that more pop sort of thing. Even though the music's still very rough, um, it was recorded in Redondo Beach with Spot and. Uh, from what I've read, all Bob would do is uh, plug into a distortion pedal, an MXR Plus, and plug that into the board and just go nuts. Sometimes use a chorus pedal. So it's pretty It's pretty raw, um, pretty impressive. Yes, I mean, th- this was set up and take note. Yes, I agree. Uh, we, uh, in the Beef People, we did a song on... Um, Zen Arcade that Grant Hart wrote called Pink Turns to Blue. It was never released as a single, but it's, it is regarded as one of their better songs. Um, and I think we're going to play just a little bit of it. Yeah. Of us doing a cover of Husker Du. Uh, this is Pink Turns to Blue, The Beef People. Grant 
Hart, this is his second appearance uh, on only yes. the eighth um, or seventh podcast. Seventh, yeah. um, because what a sensitive and interesting songwriter, particularly for a, a guy who just bashed the hell out of the drums. Really? But, um, a sense of, of melody and... and um, of sensitivity in in yes. the lyrics and mm-hmm. um you know miss grant um saw him here in durham uh not too long before he passed and uh just he they never had the notoriety the recognition i think uh that that um bob had right has still um, has yes but uh yeah, you know, it would behoove you to pull out some Grant solo stuff, and yes, you know, as well as paying attention to you know who gets the credit for the songwriting on those Who's Do songs. One of the things that made Who's Do so great was was the two songwriters. They would basically split the records. You'd have half Bob songs and half Grant songs, and it really was a good, you know, split. One of everything probably wouldn't have been as good for that band anyway yeah yeah um we um saw them on the new day rising tour in athens yes yes and they uh they just came out and they they killed it i mean yeah it was an amazing from show from start to if, beginning it was a fairly large venue i don't remember was mm-hmm. it on uga yeah campus, it was maybe? some yeah one of those yeah big shed things in the, on the campus and uh they just came out and Remember, our Pete Buck was there. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, he came out with his Rickenbacker, and nobody could hear him because uh, Bob was playing so loud. <laughs> <laughs> but a for effort. Yes, indeed. Um, I I was lucky to see them more. I don't know if it was lucky. Um, saw them right at the end of the band uh, on the Warehouse tour. They were playing in Atlanta, and it was a little disappointing. They they played the Warehouse, the double record, all twenty songs in order. In sequence, and that was pretty much it. No encores or anything. Um, you could kind of tell they were sick of it, um, and it's a shame that they did break up. Um, they, they were such such an influential band on us, um, as you could tell by the cover we played for you, and uh, the way they played, the, the the tightness and the speed and the pop, and uh, it was. Um, I don't know that they're the American buzzcocks, but yeah, yeah I mean, it's cert- it, I'm very different in sound, but yes. the um, the essential notions mm-hmm. of of loud, fast, mm-hmm. but and, refined, and heartfelt. yeah, and, and heartfelt, heartfelt too, yeah. yeah, a lot of emotion in the music, which yes. is really, you know, the, and not not a lot of sloganeering like some of the other punk bands, some of the other hardcore bands, you know, um, they're they're they're. Um, were beyond that. The, lyric, the lyrics were much more interesting, I thought. And like the buzzcocks, they're from the north of their country. That's right. Yeah, so good. it's a geographic thing. And, and, and absolutely, absolutely. So um, I was uh, inspired later on to buy a Flying V guitar, just like Bob's. And uh, I, I had for a long time, I had an amplifier set up kind of like his as well. So um, they definitely had a, a, a strong influence on me. Do you have any recommendations? Ah, recommendations. Well, uh, the first thing I want to talk about was uh, an amazing restaurant we were at <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> last night. Uh, the official pizzeria of uh, singles, of, uh, singles going, going steady. steady. This is in Durham, North Carolina, uh, and it is called Hutchins, Hutchins Garage. Garage. It's a new place uh, on which street? Deer is it? Street. Gre- Deer Street. Deer Street. In Durham, yeah, in the DIY district. Yes. So of course, it's across know. a motor co, right? Yep. And. Uh, it's only been open a short while, and but they uh, got the formula. Whew, they- it's an old garage. It's it's a cool spot. Uh, it has an outdoor patio, um, lots of amazing craft beer, and the pizza was just off the chain. We had the, the yeah. grandma style pizza. Yeah, it was great. It was really something. Uh, very airy and not not dense. Yeah, not greasy. Just mm-hmm. uh, crisp and uh, mm-hmm. soft at the same mm-hmm. time. So it was very, it was an oxymoronic pizza. And they played the coolest music the whole time in, in the bar. <laughs> we were taking notes yes. about what are, oh, that'd make a great, <laughs> yes. great episode. We heard, a, we heard New Order, we heard the Sugar Cubes, the Smiths, Altered um, Image, Iggy Pop, Altered <laughs> Images. I mean, it was, we were in heaven. Good pizza and good music and a cool place. So that's uh, Hutchins Garage. That's our, our free plug for them. 
Yes, so it's a double recommendation. Absolutely. You got anything else? Um, it's kind of hard because this is a cover because we often, mm -hmm. you know, think about who would you like to hear to hear them do, yeah, yeah, do mm -hmm. this cover. But of course, this is a cover. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know, like a tertiary level, mm -hmm. um, the cover of the cover of the cover. I could hear REM doing this. Oh yeah, yeah, it yeah. would be a completely different style. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a you get the. The, the final synthesis, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You get the two extremes, or and maybe maybe even a, the two. a band like the Long Riders. Oh yeah, they could have they could yeah. have pulled off something like this. I think. I think you're right. Um, so, Husker Du, um, Eight Miles High, amazing single. Uh, it has a great cover. I don't know anything yes. about the design. We often like to, mm -hmm. to talk about um, designers, yeah. but uh, you know, if you know anything about that, you can. Mm -hmm. Tell us in the comments because yes. it is a, a great looking single with yeah. um, um, yeah, it's purple. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Lots there, of birds on it. That, you can tell I went to art school <laughs> yes. for a short time, right? Yes, it's yes. purple. She knows her colors. It's school of design. And uh, the other thing I would say, if you're not a fan of the the album by Husker Du Zen Arcade, it's, it is a double. What's it's wrong with a, you? Yes, it's kind of a uh, a touchstone, a milestone in uh, indie American music. And uh, if you were too young to remember it, you might want to go check that out. Or if you're too old to remember it now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It is a double. It's an amazing record. They, the, the story is that they recorded it in 88 hours, working all the way through, uh, fueled on um, uh, mind-expanding drugs. <laughs> yes. And, Assistive uh, chemicals. And, and it is kind of a... A story. It's got a bit of a concept. A, a guy that leaves his, leaves home has a kind of a broken home and gets a girlfriend and she overdoses and he uh, has some spiritual things going on and it's it's an interesting little story that it's all done in an amazing kind of hardcore, um, loud, fast uh, setting. So who's could do? Again, Loud, fast, and sensitive. Exactly. That's a, a good explanation. Again, one of our favorite bands. Uh, check out anything they've done, really. But Zen Arcade and Eight Miles High are, are definitely uh, towards the top. So that's it for us. Um, this has been Singles Going Steady, number 07, uh, Eight Miles High. And we'll um, be back talking about some of these members. But certainly we're going to talk about Sugar. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. A later um, Bob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Grant. Group. Yeah. yeah. And we'll talk about Grant, too. You'll hear all about him. So until next time, we'll see you then, okay? Bye. Bye. To learn more about the artists and recordings we just talked about, visit our website at zubrecords.com and click on the Singles Going Steady icon. You'll also find links to the persons, places, and things we recommend, and much more. You can find episodes of Singles Going Steady on our website or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Singles Going Steady is brought to you by the power and majesty of Zub Records. Zub, Zub Records. Records. Smart, Smart sounds for sharp, sharp people. people.